Make him a piece of flour, piece of bread. What is my raw material? Flour. Flour. Main raw material is flour. So I purchase flour from some uh, flour manufacturing mills. Now the flour comes to my warehouse in the bakery. But my final good is the finished good is the bread or cake or bun or whatever. So from the flour, this flour getting converted to bread. So this is what we call conversion. In this conversion, we incur something called conversion cost. What do you think the major conversion cost? What do you think the major conversion cost is? Labor cost. Those fellows who wear the cash, and I don't know how many of you have been to a, a bakery inside. Now these days, okay, they have machines. A time when uh, manually, manual process, this plug at, uh, uh, you know, what do you call it? I name it in English. Processed. Manually. Have you seen bakeries in your village? Mm -hmm. Inside the table, they jump up and down. They use the legs to do the processing of the flour. Not allowed. Hmm, not in my hand. Uh, no, in hand. <laughs> but I have seen from my eyes. <laughs> No, no, uh, no machine are there. Are that time. <laughs> <laughs> One is the labor charges. The other, what is the other element of the conversion cost? Overheads, electricity, water, depreciation of the machines, all these part of it. So that also you need to factor in arriving the cost of the inventory. And what do you think the other cost? This is what I have discussed also. So Sometimes you would also need to pay royalty. This uh, McDonald or KFC, the ingredient. These ingredients, they uh, some of the ingredients, they bring deliberate or dedicatively from the main uh, location. So and. They also agree every single uh, bread they manufacture, they will have to pay two dollars. I am just giving an example. Two dollars to the parent or the principal. If you don't pay for it, you are unable to complete the sales. Then that also becomes part of your cost of inventory that we tentatively can call it as other cost. Now we I discussed already. Now this is what I was talking about. Now overheads. How I bring the that particular unit portion from a costing point of view? We have something called overhead allocation absorption process. You got to use that mechanism in arriving the overhead component per unit. Nowadays we also have different or new technologies or methodologies, activity based costing, target costing and all that. You should, uh, you should be learning this from a costing point of view and coming up with that calculation, give that answer to the accountant who would work out the cost of the inventory. Other cost. These costs we will not include in the cost of inventory. Abnormal cost, unexpected cost. You bring the flour from the mill to your warehouse. In between, uh, let's say, I'm also telling a real time example. I was working in a cake factory as an accounts clerk. Our factory used to purchase flour from a government. Uh, uh, corporate shop from our place to the corporate shop around 9 km distance our factory is on the mountain 
around half a kilometer, the lorry has to come up on the hill. Half it through, the tire got punctured. And that was a rainy day. And then they had no option but to unload all the flour bags halfway. And many of the bags were damaged. Now these damage, can I factor to the cost of my uh, finished goods? Yeah. I can't. These are abnormal situations, which you have to consider as an expense. It should go to the other general and administrative expense category, which you cannot take into cost of sales. Storage cost. In our case, demolition charges. Yeah, demolition also you cannot. Demolition is not uh, an inevitable cost. You could avoid. That's what we said here, no? Directly attributable cost only, you should take it. Demolition is because of your carelessness, your ignorance. <laughs> so you cannot take that into argue, okay, that I will put the burden to my customer. You can't do that. So, uh, storage, finished goods is storage. Now, question is, to have the finished good, if I don't pay the rent to the warehouse, can I have the finished good or not? Still, I, I can have. But, what about the raw material warehouse? That's a different story. If you don't pay the rent to the raw material, you have chiller, let's say, uh, Saadia. Saadia is a famous uh, company for chicken. Qatar National Important Export Company. They have these cold rooms and chillers. So if they don't have the chiller, or if they don't pay the rent to the chiller warehouse, then the chicken that they're going to keep it there, and the customer they will buy, they will be, you know, God bless them. So, you got to ask the question, administrative overheads and selling costs. What is the salary of the accountant salary? You cannot uh, charge it. Uh, security, uh, security guard or the part of the cost of inventory. Borrowing cost included if for a qualifying inventory. It's a very uh, detailed discussion. Uh, later, I'm going to bring a different standard name, borrowing cost, IS23. We will talk about it. What do you mean by qualifying inventory? Produced in large volumes on a repetitive basis, and I borrow loan for the purpose of that. And the interest that I am paying uh, on the loan is for the purpose of continuously ensuring a smooth production of that inventory. Then that inventory becomes qualifying inventory. Meaning, uh, you need to have a substantial effort in completing the production. So in then that case, Borrowing cost is taken, part of the cost of inventory. If not, I talk to profit and loss account. Realizable value is of course the price of the organization receives for its inventory from the market. Estimated selling uh, price. Minus, however, getting this inventory to market may involve additional expense, effort in repackaging, advertising, delivery, and even repairing of demand inventory. That's all categorized into these two things. So the difference is what you call net realizable. See this example. Item 87, my cost is 70. NRV 90. I should value this item based on cost. N099. NRV 13, cost is 12, again, cost, but this one, and you go to uh, look into this situation, and then accordingly, you should value. Now, uh, we will also talk about something called post-balance sheet events. Uh, events occurring after the balance sheet date. Let's say on the balance sheet date, I have an inventory, uh, value that cost, $80 <coughs> or $70 <coughs> and I pre pre presume that I could sell this in the market at 90 that is that by December but January 15 uh, due to the, there was an economic uh, crash in the market 
we had to, and also new items came to the market. I had to complete the sale of this. I forced to sell this at 60 riyals. Actual sales took place at what price? 60 riyals. When? 15th of January. Now you need to ask the question. This 15th of January falls into which period? One condition, it is after the balance sheet date. So it is post balance sheet event. The second condition, is it before the annual general meeting where the financials get signed and approved by both the directors and the auditors? If during this period any event taking place, then you go to revisit and decide how to present on 31st December. Against, then you have to use the same terms. Cost and dinner. Now, uh, in, in arriving the cost, there are certain equations, or a certain methodology or mechanism, standard and suggest. Actually, standard suggest these two. This is an identification of what are the cost factors? But the mechanism are this. Let's say I have a hardware. I'm selling cement bags. On 1st of January, I have 100 cement bags in my warehouse. On 10th of January, I receive 200 bags. So you can think, uh, imagine a room. Uh, though is that my 100 cement bags are kept over here. Next shipment of 200 cement bags will be kept over here. Now the customer coming and purchasing 75 bags. And if you follow first in first out, the labor working in that hardware, he should pick 75 bags from which not? The very first not. If it is 150 cement bags, he should complete that 100 from the first lot and then take 50 from the yeah. second part. Remember, practically, it is not possible. These the are only on theoretical principles. No labor can come and spend time, ah, oh yes, this is the first lot. I will stand and jump into that and then bring 100 men. Not, not at all possible. So, first thing first out, or oh, then otherwise, pay the damage. I would like to recall LIFO. Last thing first up, IFRS completely banned LIFO. However, US GAP still sitting on it. So that's a different uh, subject to talk about. Inventory items that are not ordinarily interchangeable for goods and services produced and segregated for specific, that's what I was telling. But specific identification, how you do this? Inventory items that are not ordinarily interchangeable. So this is separate, specifically identified as a category of inventory. For goods and services produced and segregated for specific products. Cost of latest purchases ends up in cost of uh, ending inventory. Cost of earliest purchases are in cost of goods sold. Now, if you you have uh, FIFO and you have weighted average, for the sake of understanding, we also talk about LIFO. And we have cost of sales, we have closing stock, we have gross profit. Now, what do you think, the, if you are following at a time when prices are increasing due to inflation, which method will give me more gross profit? <coughs> hmm? What do you think? You are whispering something, you can only tell, no problem. Five four. See today two dollar. Next week seven dollar. 
after two weeks, twenty-two dollars. Because of the current inflationary situation, the prices are increasing. And if I'm following five four, no? my closing inventory will be below that twenty-two. So my closing inventory will be very high. Closing stock. When closing stocks are more, what will happen to the cost of sales? Will go down. If the cost of sales goes down, the gross profit will be increased. So please understand that as well. Expense. Carrying amount of inventory sold is expense, meaning you consider that as cost of sales. Inventory adjustment, losses, write downs, lower of cost and NRV, write downs, reversals are recognized as adjustment to the expense recognized in the period. See, look into this example. In a warehouse, there was, uh, there was some uh, theft. 20 bags of uh, uh, basmati rice got theft. In my purchases, we have that 20 bags included. If people don't know this step that took place, in theory, in records, the 20 bags will be in the closing stock. Correct? But after revealing the investigation, they came up with an understanding 20 bags of basmati rice has been stolen. So this has to be removed from the purchases. So if I remove from the purchases, what will happen to my cost of sales? It will reduce. And then that particular amount, I should reclassify under expense as inventory stolen. Same story with damages. Same story with inventory, uh, you know, write downs. Also here, another insurance. Insurance. Yeah, insurance will come. So, for example, for this, uh, if you have an insurance for. Uh, is stolen of inventory, then if the insurance company agreeing to pay that, you should consider that as other income. That's it. I want to discuss one particular thing, may not directly relate to inventory, but still people dealing with inventory, they need to carry this knowledge. Tell me whether you all have the knowledge of these two terms. Margin, markup, not margarine. Huh? That is Esther margarine. How many of you know Esther margarine? Ah, she knows. Eighty, twenty, hundred and twenty, hundred and twenty. A baby. <laughs> when my selling price is 100 and the profit is calculated based on the sale selling price is one answer. When the profit is 20 based on the cost and then say another answer. Now I need to ask you which one of this is one of these things. Cost and profit is margin. Cost and profit? Margin. This is margin. This is what you are saying. Okay, he is saying this is margin. How many of you voting in favor of him? Okay, besides your answers. Besides yeah. your answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 